Oh, Aris left them alive in here, didn't she? Yeah, that's right. Well, it's not like she can kill them. Dang it! That wasn't an actual loot vase. That was a regular vase. I hated how they retroactively added loot vases into this game. <laughs> I didn't really care for loot vase. I thought it was a pretty mediocre subscription service. Oh, yeah? Ooh, yeah. yeah. Cube goes in there. Oh, this is a puzzle I gotta solve. Half the time, it. the vase was broken when it got there. There you go. No, no, that was the solution. Oh, there you go. There you go. It's basically. Here is your prize. Tokens? It's a cat statue. Sphinx. Boo! I want tokens. Oh, it's the one with the golden suit of armor. The yeah! It was actually. Oh. Time to get medieval. And there's three of them. <laughs> Getting medieval. That didn't do as much as I was hoping it was going to do. Very well. It's actually counterproductive. Okay, I just got stabbed in the face. It's kind of productive to use a grenade. They seem to shrug it off. I didn't realize it to be flanked by friends. Yeah, he's got buddies. Can I go back? I'm, I'm, I'm leaving. I'm leaving. I decided this is not a good challenge to go for. Ha ha ha! Shoot him in the butt. Shoot him. Okay, his par apparently his parasite butt was protected by the suit of armor. Yeah, and also his parasite's on the, on the back. Come on. There we go. That's that one. Oh, it closed behind me, dang it. That was my safety area. They can't get in here, I don't think. Yeah, apparently they could, they just decide to fuck off if you couldn't get in the elevator, which actually kind of makes me mad. Yeah, but you know what? It works for me. I can just cheese this. I'm out of hanging ammo. All right, shotgun time. Ouch. I parried with a shotgun, I think, maybe. It can On this episode of Mike dumps 38 rounds into a piece of armor that clearly isn't working, and then he <laughs> continues to do it, and then somehow it works out for him. <laughs> All right. Oh, well, body parts rolling away. Ooh, I got a yellow diamond from that, eh? I'm not sure that was worth the ammo I expended, but whatever. I and feel also, victorious. And you got eight spinals. Oh, that, that's actually a good bonus. And you still haven't repaired your body armor. That's true. I keep on forgetting about that. Well, I didn't forget. Last time I didn't have the money for it. Hopefully now I will after getting all those medals and whatnot. Okay, so I think we've gotten everything in here. We can head on out. Yay! Also, there's a bunch of jars in this room that oh, you can break open for I'll, ammo and I'll whatnot. I'll do that. It's very important that I have that stuff. Money! You know, what I, you know what I miss in this game that they had in Resident Evil 2 that they don't have in this one? Um, what do you miss? Uh, wait, no, go right. What did what did they exclude from this game that they had in Resident Evil 2? Uh, Mr. X, maybe? No, the long guns have a sling on them. In Resident oh. Evil 2, and they don't in this game. For some reason, they decided not to incorporate slings in this game. Like yeah, I don't know why. It, it's like, it wasn't even a big deal. It was just complete, it wasn't a big deal at all. It was completely unnecessary, but I like being able to see the sling on there. Yeah, and granted, that takes extra modeling time, and you're probably the only person that's going to appreciate it to the extent that it should be Yeah, I'm the only one. Oh, I'll go right. Yeah, suits of armor here. I'm going to go this way, around them. Oh-ho, uh -huh. a puzzle. Let's see. That was fast. Look what it is! <laughs> what? That's just a straight up M4, M16, M4. It's a Mark 18 Mod Zero. Mark 18? Yeah, Mark 18 Mod Zero. Uh, that's the name for an M4 that's been chopped down to like a 10 and a half inch barrel. Oh, okay. Is it a shorter barrel than an M4? Yes, it is. Oh, okay. M4 has a 14 and a half inch barrel. That has a 10 and a half inch barrel. Damn. All right. Well, I've got this now. The... I'm just going to call it the Cobra Assault Rifle. No, it's it stands for CQBR. So the Cobra Assault Rifle looks very much like it's the, not a Cobra the assault uh, rifle. M4, but you say it's because it got a chopped down barrel, eh? Yep. Okay, I got the Picatinny rail right there. Got the uh, magazine. It's an M4. Technically, it's an M4A1 because it's fully automatic, but it's been converted to have a 10 and a half inch barrel. CQBR stands for Close Quarter Battle Rifle. Battle Rifle, rifle yeah. Um, and it's got that additional handguard right there, which is kind of nice because always gotta, be, gotta put your hand on the Picatinny that rail. That's always uncomfortable. That one has a Knight's Armament M5 RAS on it, which is the name of that rail system. And it even has the Knight's Armament Vertical Foregrip, also known as the Broom Handle, oh. on there. Uh, actually, scroll so that, uh, move it so that I can see the very top of the rail system. Yep, that's a Knight's Armament M5. You, uh, you I can, can tell, tell because it's got a screw on the top of it. And the screw. <laughs> there's, <laughs> a screw there's a screw right there that a Knight's Armament M5 RAS has that this one... That this one also has. Okay. Uh, there's also some problems with it, but we're not going to get into that right now because otherwise we'll be here for the rest of the the rest of the evening. Okay. In three sentences, what's wrong with this? 
So this is actually auto. This is an auto. This is an actual combat rifle because it can go on full auto. Well, it doesn't mean the fact that it goes on full auto doesn't make it a combat rifle, but it's based off of the M4A1, which is the fully automatic variant, as opposed mm. to the M4, which is the three-round burst variant. Okay. Uh, what's wrong with this one? There, there's, there's a few things, but the, the, the thing that I notice instantly is that the bolt is missing the exhaust ports. Wait, where? On it, the bolt is missing the two oh, holes. Oh. That would be the exhaust ports. Oh, you're right. That's right. There's two exhaust ports that are over here. Because I can tell you exactly why that is. This is modeled after most likely a Tokyo Marui electric airsoft gun. And the Tokyo Marui electric <laughs> airsoft gun does not have the two holes on the bolt mm -hmm. because the bolt is non-functional. Right. I think you can use the charging handle to pull it back a little bit, but that's how you adjust the hop up on the airsoft gun. Mm. Also, the rear sight is like a really weird shape. Yeah. I, I don't know why the rear sight is that weird of a shape. But yeah, this would this would have been accurate for... Oh, uh, the castle nut is entirely too thick. Which, I don't know why nut? the castle the, the nut that attaches the receiver extension or buffer tube to the receiver is way too thick. Oh, okay. I don't know why it's so thick. Hmm. Okay. Well, a little minor nitpicks here and there. Otherwise, There's, it's pretty good. Yeah, for not, I am the only person. I am the only person that's going to be able to tell you everything that is wrong on this <laughs> for the actual Mark 18 Mod Zero. Okay. I mean, maybe not the only person, but yeah, it's like very few people would realize that. Do you know how I know this is a Mark 18 Mod 0 and not a Mark 18 Mod 1? Do tell. Uh, because it has the M5, or the Knight's Armor M5 rail system, and it has a fixed front sight. The Mark 18 Mod 1 has a Daniel Defense Mark 18 rail system on it. Oh, okay. So it has a completely different rail. Okay. And well, also a different stock. Usually it's like the, um, usually it's the LMT SOP Mod stock on the CQBR or the Mark 18 Mod mod. One. Okay, well, now that I've got the assault rifle, let's see how it does in combat, eh? Uh, it uses rifle ammo, by the way. Oh, you know what? I guess I've got to use for rifle ammo. Wait, did it come with? Oh, it came with rifle ammo, apparently. Yeah, it came with 20 rounds of rifle ammo. All this right. Thing, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to tell you my personal opinion of the, the Mark 18 in this game. In this game, yeah. Of the CQBR in this game. Yeah, yeah. It sucks. Don't use it. Don't use the Cobra rifle. That, that's my personal opinion. It, go, it burns through ammo way too fast, and it doesn't do enough damage. I see. I'll probably try it out just for fun, but if it's not great, that I'm probably going to go back to handgun ammo, honestly. You uh, you see me? No, he doesn't see you. Well, you hit him once. Oh, yeah, and meleeed him, and now that thing is... Oh, God, he's whipping. He's whipping. He's a whippy boy. I'm now shoot going. him with the assault rifle. Okay. I'll see if the assault rifle does any damage. Whoa, not I mean, a... it's it's... It will. You hit him once. I, I hit him three once. Three of those rounds, three of those rounds skipped off the armor and one round actually hit him. Uh, so I used basically one or two rounds to make that, take that thing out of its suit and then another round to put it down. Seemed pretty effective, honestly. Well, it was because you, you, you fired. If you single tap rounds out of it, it's going to be way more effective. Okay. I mean, honestly, I'd probably enjoy this a lot more than the sniper rifle in general. But that's yeah, nice. It was Spinel. Those are pretty rare. Yeah. As long as you single tap rounds out of it, it's going to be far more effective. <laughs> yeah. There's no guns in this game, as far as I'm concerned, that are not viable. You can use anything. It's just like, I, I feel like if you want rate of fire, <laughs> use the handgun. You no, know no, I should really, I should really not go with the U.S. military thought process. Um, no, go back. Mm. Oh, well, actually, no, you need to repair stuff. So go to the yeah, merchant. Yeah, merchant. I should not go with the U.S. military thing. You have full auto. Use it if you think you need to use it, but I, I wouldn't. Okay. Um, so what you can do, uh, you probably should repair your body armor too. Yeah, now I have the money for it. And you could upgrade your blacktail even further. I could. Look at that. You could max upgrade it. It's a lot of money, though. So. I did it for all the money. Ooh, I had spinels too. Yeah, you do have spinels, so you could get an exclusive upgrade ticket and put it on something if you really wanted to. Might as well. Oh! It'll save me some money. So what do I want? Do I want to increase? I do like using the shotgun, and I do get bonus shotgun shells. I'm going to tell you right now, that is the best shotgun in this game. Okay. The only shotguns that are in this game are the 870 that you get at the start of the game, mm -hmm. which is pretty good. The riot gun, or the Benelli M3, which has the most, it's the most controlled one. It's, it's got a nice, it's got a nice tight grouping. It's really fast firing. Reload speed is pretty good when you fully upgrade it. Ammo capacity is good. And then you have the Striker, which has the highest ammo capacity. 
and it spreads so much it's basically unusable. <laughs> that, yeah. I hate the striker in this game. When I said earlier that every gun in this game is viable, I mean every gun except the striker. As I recall, I can't remember if it was the mercenaries in four or five, but I do remember the striker being a, uh, one of the character's builds. Like, you pick the character, and that character always had the striker. Yeah. I think that was Resident Evil oh, 5, and I fun. always was like, oh, can I have a good shotgun? Why do I have to use the striker? So, you could do a lot worse than spending the exclusive upgrade on this shotgun. Which I'm probably going to do. Because, like, I, I straight up will use this shotgun for the entire game. Cool. The one. There we go. Stay and right then right now, the you can, if you really want to, you can put the ACOG on... <laughs> put it on, this, on the... You can put the ACOG on the M4. Okay, that is the scope, and... See, in, like, like, oh, hey, you can open that, too. Oh, that's right, I got the puzzle piece now, yeah. Let me just take that back off, because I'm not a big fan of that right now. I'll keep it if I need to snipe something, but I don't, I don't think I'll need it very often. You can also zoom in with it, too, so don't forget, don't forget that. There we go. All right, so, cube goes in here. Let me just solve the puzzle nice and quick. There we go. That's not right. Oopsie doopsie. Hold on, I'll figure it out. There we go. Nope, that's not right. Hmm. Ah! <laughs> there we go. Third time is the charm. <laughs> there you go. You got it on the third try. Look, it's a lantern. Oh, boy. Yeah, like the M4 and the M16, like, they're, they're my, my weird special interest that I know entirely too much about. You had a third one. You could have put a third one in there. Yeah, but it's not a red one, so I don't know if I want to do that just well, yet. All right, that's fair. That's the Cobra Assault Rifle. All right, so it is a CQBR. It is... Pr Damn it. <laughs> the majority of people are going to look at this and be like, yeah, that's... I don't, I don't see anything wrong with that. Seems pretty good. I'm looking at that and I'm going, I don't know why the forward assist is the old style forward assist that's flanged outwards on the outside. Hmm. Um, I don't know what this like white paint on the gun is that's I, been it's like flaking off i thought it was just like combat damage it's like scra scratches and scrapes on it the castle nut is entirely too thick i don't know why the hole is too small on that pistol grip the hole should be going all the way out to the outside edge of it yeah how am i supposed to store my magazine cleaning kit everything in there um let's see the for some reason and you mentioned those two holes missing on the bolts for some reason and i realized that this is just how they had to model it but the tapered pins that go through the front sight post that hold it in place are the same size as the roll pin that holds the gas tube in place. Which is not accurate because the roll pin that holds the gas tube in place is a roll pin and these tapered pins are made out of solid steel. The flash hider is based off of a... It's ribbed for her pleasure. I believe it's based off of... Uh, oh, am I thinking of the Knight's Armament or the Surefire? Probably both. I can't remember which one it is, but the whole point of those cuts being on there is to make it easier, or to make it so that the suppressor doesn't get carbon locked on there. Oh. The front sight post is actually apparently in this, just machined out of the entire front sight, which is incorrect because that's the thing that rotates and screws in there. <laughs> and then there's a spring-loaded detent that holds it in place. Mm -hmm. um, the Picatinny rail is too wide. Or like the- On the, on the, the back? On, on the top of the receiver, the spaces in between each one of the rail sections is too wide. <laughs> All right. The rear sight is incorrect because the rear sight is, I don't know. It's like this, it's this massive chunk and that's, that's, that's not right. Uh, what else? What else? What else? What else am I missing? These, that is a roll pin on the back part of the receiver. That one is a spring-loaded detent so that you can hinge the whole trigger guard down. By the triggers, yeah. So if you're, if you're wearing gloves. Also, I, I, I completely forgot to mention this, but the two roll pins, or the two tapered pins that hold the front sight post in, and the roll pin that holds the gas tube in place, for some reason they're like jeweled? Or no, they're not jeweled, but they're like an emerald green color. I don't know why, when you rotate it around, you can see that they're like really shiny. Ah, I don't know. Maybe I don't know it's... why. They did actually model the gas tube in there, which I think is really cool. Oh, also, yeah. Also, this front handguard retaining ring is missing a 90-degree cut on the left and right bottom side. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's missing two of those, and then there should also be two indentations, one there and one on the other side for part of the handguard ring. The barrel is entirely too wide. Why the hell is that barrel like a 9 millimeter? That makes no sense whatsoever. Every Everybody that looks at this... Everyone that looks at this is going to be like, yeah, that looks fine to me. Yeah, it's like an M16 or something, whatever. But, like, I, lo I look at this and I'm just like, that's wrong, that's wrong, that's wrong, that's wrong, that's wrong, that's wrong. I'm just listing, I'm naming off all these things. And it's just me 
let, uh, let me get this out of the way. Yeah. I know it is me being a pedantic fuck. Nobody else cares about this. The um, the pin that holds the dust cover in place. There's a pin that goes through the dust cover. You can see it sticking out there mm -hmm. and right there. Oh, right, that, yeah. The pin that goes through the dust cover is entirely too thin. You, you think that ejection port's gonna fly off, eh? It's, uh, no, the actual one is just thicker than that. Also, oh, I forgot to mention this, on the delta ring, this thing on the back, mm -hmm. the spring-loaded delta ring, that is not completely solid. There's actually a, um, it's not a circlip. What is the word I'm looking for? Anyway, there's a, there's a ring that goes in there. The, basically, the way this works is there's the barrel nut that attaches to the receiver. You have... The, the way you put this together is you have the barrel nut that is part of... The, that is on the barrel. You put a spring in there, you put the delta ring assembly over it, and then you put a clip on that, and that's what holds everything together. It is not completely solid like this one is. Mm-hmm. And it's just, it's just me being, being pedantic. That's all it is, is it's me being pedantic about this gun because I know, like I said a long time ago, I know more about AR-15s than I do about interpersonal relationships. <laughs> to be clear, you don't hate the way this looks. It's 99% no, great. It is, it is fine. I am the only person that is going to notice all of these things that are wrong with it. And be bothered by I, Oh, them. there's also the hole is missing from the buffer tube. There's a hole in the back that yeah. allows water to drain out. I mean, yeah, but I don't think very many people are going to be looking at it. No, that. nobody's going to look <laughs> at this stuff. I'm the only person. If they actually went into the detail that I wanted them to go into, they would be like, look, I'm sorry. We cannot spend $6,000 modeling this one gun for the game. Why is it whenever the player equips the Cobra Assault Rifle, the, the person who's the director of the game is calling it the Cobra assault rifle because he's clueless mm. on guns. Why is it whenever the player equips this gun, there's a huge amount of a slowdown and lag? Well, I had to model everything. Everything had to be properly modeled. Look, when you break the gun, screws come out. You can detach it into its separate receiver pieces. Yeah. I had to set it up so that when you when you put the ACOG on the gun, the rear sight was removed from the gun and then placed uh, behind the vertical pistol grip on the or the vertical grip on the front. Yeah, store it underneath there. Is that what you put, is that what you do with these things? No. You don't okay. <laughs> no. No. That, that that was that was something so th this this rear sight that's on here. Yeah, the classic is, iron sights here. Th this rear sight is I believe LMT design uh Lewis Machine and Tool designed this specific one. And what this one is is they basically took what was the the uh removable carry handle and they basically chopped off all of the carry handle and then deburred and smoothed <laughs> everything out. They they event they they do custom make this rear sight. And the reason for having this specific rear sight is because it does still give you uh, range adjustment. So that little wheel that's down there, you can adjust for different ranges. Mm -hmm. Anyway, yeah. On the very first versions of them, they basically took a carry handle rear sight and chopped most of the carry handle off so that you still had your rear sight, but you could put some type of other optic on there. Okay. When the Marines were issued M16s, and then they began issuing RCOs, or the ACOG, for some reason, some Marine units insisted that, that the Marines still had to carry, still had to bring the detachable carry handle with them. Uh -huh. Because if the optic fails, where are your sights gonna be? <laughs> However, the ACOG is a fixed four power optic that has tritium in it. There's no battery to fail. The only way that the ACOG is really going to fail is if it gets shot. I see. Okay. Yeah. So, anyway, it, I, I, I'm getting I'm getting off on a on a mild tangent. The Marines insisted. Some Marine units insisted that the, the their Marines had to keep the carry handle with their M16. Okay. For some reason. Yeah. All right. So a bunch of them would take the carry handle and would attach it to the bottom of the rail. <laughs> because where the hell else am I gonna put it? I guess, yeah. You have to keep it with the weapon, so they would just attach it to the bottom of the weapon. And that's that's completely ignoring the fact that most of these ACOGs that they were issued had emergency backup iron sights built into the ACOG. Hmm. But they still were like, oh, well, what are you gonna do if your ACOG breaks? I don't know, use the iron sights on the top of the ACOG? Yeah. It, it's just just military incompetence. It's, kind of yeah, it's just you. military incompetence. Oh well. Well, I, I guess the point that you're trying to make is this this weapon looks good. No, it looks great. <laughs> it looks honestly, it looks fine. I have zero complaints about. Well, uh, you, you I'm just, not. I'm not complaining <laughs> 20 about minutes. <laughs> I'm not complaining about how this looks. I'm just saying those are the things they missed. And also, those are the things they missed. Also, there's no serial number information on the side of that receiver. Uh, they scraped it off and didn't want to be traced back to them. Yeah, uh, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> All right, cool.
This is kind of a bummer because like uh, Chris's uh, the Chris's Chris's BNT USW that he uses in Resident Evil Village or Resident Evil Eight. The serial number on it is the date of the first Resident Evil. Oh, that's so nice. So I, I, I think it's 7 18 1998. I can't remember the date. <laughs> I don't remember the date, but it's the serial number is US 7 18 1998. I thought that was a really neat detail that not only did they actually put the serial number of the gun in that one, but they also made it a reference to something. The guns in Resident Evil 8 look so good, except for the 1911. <laughs> The 1911 doesn't look great, okay. but every other gun in that game looks amazing. Like they okay. had, they had basically. I don't know who was working at Capcom, but it basically was the Japanese version of me okay. working at Capcom. <laughs> that was like, no, 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 no. We're making the right. I know that you never actually get to use the rifle the Hound Wolf Squad is using, but we're making sure that it is 100% accurate to a knight's to a knight's armor and M110 SASS. Okay, I didn't realize the guns in that game were so exquisitely detailed. Yeah, they're very, very well detailed. Okay. One more reason for you to really enjoy that game, even though I didn't much care for it or remember much about it. 